And now time for something completely shameless. This is Hellenics. Hashtag shameless self-promotion. And you are listening to The The Escape Pod. Cast. This show was recorded in front of a live Twitch audience. Only one thing left to say now, I guess. <clears throat> Take it Take away, it away boys. jerks. No. Noob. Stop that. That's a bad BK series droid. Bad newbie. You be nice. The line is Take, Take it, it away, away boys. boys. One is a Grand Arena specialist from the UK, the other is a territory battle tactician from the US. Together, there are no signs of intelligent life on board. With both having played this game since launch, the one thing we are sure of is that you will be entertained. The Escape Pod Cast, a service of the Escape Pod Castaways, a weekly podcast about the mobile game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Live from the network studios of Yavin 4, here are your hosts, Neil Andrew Eyre and Paul Anthony. Coming up on this week's edition of the Escape Pod, Cast. Conquest 8's grinding has begun again. There ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of swagger grind. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. When you said you were sorry, I thought you were going to. Oh, no, no, no. I was apologizing for singing. Oh, right. Okay. But this is a lot, Paul. Yeah, that that's true. How far have we gotten? Oh, man. Shock T has apparently become a monster in territory battles. CG has taken notice and is investigating. I, for one, was impacted by this crazy unannounced buff. Grand Arena Championships seems to have taken a hit recently. How so, Neil? Well, we'll go into that in our second segment. Okay, that sounds good. But I'm excited for our incoming transmission as well. Yes, there is a new guild assistant bot out there in the ether. The creator of the Mandalorian bot sits down to talk with us about his creation. And it has spreadsheets too. Ooh, I know I'm excited. A new emotional episode of Helly and the New debuts on the show this week. And of course, Patreon's choice on the bridge with a special announcement. All this and breaking news as and if it happens. Right here on the Escape Pod cast. The Escape Pod cast news. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into this week's edition of the Escape Pod cast. I am your host, Paul Anthony, and as always, you you do this. You you do it better. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Escape Podcast. I'm your host, the Nev, and as always, I'm joined by my hetero life partner, Paul Anthony. Paul, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I don't want. I as soon as I did the point, you looked down, so I was like, ah, I gotta go. Yeah, no, I was I was firing. No, I I I was. I do have some peripheral vision. I may be blind and need to wear glasses, but I do have peripheral vision, and I did see i just you know then you started speaking i'm like oh <laughs> you're doing it then you do it fine you do it so guys today okay. is going to be a very very fun episode a very awesome interview um we'll be doing with man of mandalorian bot um a new episode of Helly and the noob as we said uh, in the intro and some very fun topics um well, fun, fun because they'll generate discussion. I should say, Neil. Um, but let's uh, <laughs> let's get into uh, let's get into this. First off, what we have is you know obviously Conquest Nine is, or Conquest Eight is live and running. It's gonna be interesting. I I've, I've started to lose happiness with the mode um it as a lot of people have said it truly is a grind well yeah of course it's a grind it it absolutely is a grind it's uh, you know if if something takes a lot of time to do and there's no way for you to um pay like whales and krakens should be able to do. That's how, you know, that's how the game gets paid for. Whales and krakens, no, I don't want to have to wait 
I don't want to have to spend hours and hours and hours doing this. I want to pay money and I want it now. That's the way that, you know, mobile games work. The Krakens and the whales pay for the, sustain, the you know, for the, the, the sustenance um, and then free to play. You know, we're the ones that are supposed to be stuck grinding. What you're not supposed to do is make the people that pay grind. You know, you and, and they've just made um, the, the, the entire mode way too time consuming. Um, and even those mega whales and those mega krakens that will just do 50 refresh off the 50 refresh off the 50 refresh off the 50 refresh it's not in, in my opinion it's not too time consuming it's because you're you're spending the you're spending 20 energy instead of 10 energy to do your battle so you're getting five it's the roadblocks every single time it's the galactic republic with their damage reflection um that just makes it not fun it's just a constant struggle every single time it's the struggle bus as people say to to even do this and they're, the fact that they're using energy to swap boost cards, like Big Country Mags points out in the chat, <laughs> I was fine with the with the cost of data uh, of the of the currency, but I think we should be able to sell. If we sell our cards that we don't want to, that's our own damn fault. They talk about keeping user accountability in for things like territory war and territory battle where you can't take out somebody's errant thing if you're an officer. How about user accountability for yourself? If you sell the damn card, <laughs> it's your own damn fault. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, too expensive, uh, too time consuming. Um, it, it just, it's, it's two times. I mean, I'm, I'm still in sector two. I'm still in sector Same. two. I am stuck. I am stuck on a node at the moment. Um, and I wasn't able to blast through it with my, I wasn't able to put 100% stamina. I wasn't able to get through it, it I, which is weird because I've been able to blitz through, um, the bad batch before. Couldn't get through bad batch with um 100% stamina cls team full set of data discs couldn't get through it I'm where's like, your right, jml okay, right. I've got... where's your mm -hmm. where's your jedi master luke yeah no um i'm, I'm gonna have to I'm, i will I, I i had 40 energy when i logged in so i tried it with cls and then i tried the other node with cls so it was i had two i there was two nodes in order to progress i either had to go for the bad batch or I had to go for a Galactic Republic. Um, so I failed on the bad batch, but you don't lose stamina if you lose the match. So I lost 20 energy. I, I, I'd logged in, I think I had 45. So I'll, oh, sod it. I'll just, I'll, I'll just do the Galactic Republic one. Couldn't do the Galactic Republic one. So my strongest team, my strongest team, obviously apart from JML uh, with JKL and all that lot, um, but I was doing it because it was, I was trying to get um, no supports. Because there's it's the uh, it's the no supports one, um, but uh, yeah, um, it, it's just yeah, it's you know. So there's two battles I've lost. I'm still on the same node, and at that point, it, it, you know, at that point, I was like, yeah, that is just yeah, just no. Uh, I mean, I'll I don't get me wrong. If I'm logged in and I've got energy, I'll tap on and I'll just try a battle. But I'm not going for feats anymore. I'm, I don't care what data disks I get. I don't care what box I get. I just don't care. I am trying to follow the guides um, uh, regard, you know, the, regarding Sector 2, and my, my, my teams are just not cutting it, even following the guides. Spe speaking so, of um, those guides, a huge shout-out and a standing invitation to end all be all to come on the show during a conquest week or before conquest starts to talk about his guides. Oh yeah, no, no, I've spoken to him. About oh, I, I know. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm making it, I'm, I'm publicly um, giving him that standing invitation right now. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. I'd already asked him, so, and he's already said yes. He just couldn't do it at the time. Yeah. But um, but yeah, no, it's just it's 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 just yeah. I, I'm kind. Of, I, thankfully, you know, I've made it into another guild. Um, so that guild is doing the Crankor, so I'll be able to get my relicate materials uh, from Crankor, which is why I care even less now about conquest, um, because I'm going to get my relicate materials from somewhere else. Uh, I, I just feel sorry for all of the poor guys stuck in guilds that are now disintegrating because they're not doing the Crankor and where they were getting their relicate materials from was box six of the Conquest. They're no longer getting it. So guilds are literally falling apart. You know, 10, 20 people are leaving guilds and going to eat alts. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I've seen it on Reddit. Um, people saying, you know, what should I do? Um, we had it on RSG, you know, what should I do? Should I leave my guild? We've already lost 10 people in the, in the past couple of days. Everybody's jumping ship to a guild that can do Crankor because those same people cannot get relicate materials from Conquest because they just don't want to do Conquest. So instead of having to grind, you know, they're, they're, going, they're going the other way. I don't, have you had any any issues? Like, I mean, you're doing crank. We we are doing crankor. Your guild, yes, yeah. Your guild does the crankor, so it's not you know so you're you're not going to have people leaving your guild because you can do the crankor. Um, but uh, I, I bet there's going to be some people in your guild that are now going to look at crankor as a little bit more important. Definitely, it is. It's now become the most important. You know, to to, to anybody that can't. The people that were doing box six that are no longer doing box six, crank calls become the most important aspect of the game for them progressing in the game so that they can actually make relicate characters. For me, it really boils down to the fact that I understand that their thought process is get through conquest as fast as you can and then go back and do the do the feats you know because it's it's yeah, for that, that's what that's what i, used I know to do, it's yeah. 14 you, you you're wanting to you're wanted to do 14 night sister battles in the first one right mm -hmm. so that means that no bounty hunters sector one bounty hunters sector bounty hunters one. sector one okay what was the night? Why did I take in night sisters then? I'm, I'm look. I'm night. Night sisters is a different. Night sisters is a different sector. It's bounty hunters in sector one. Okay, so I have no idea why I took my night sisters in. Maybe, may, oh, maybe. Oh, maybe I did. Is I did. Okay, so I completed sector one, and I'm like, oh, what do I need to do here? And I went into sector two, and. And the first battle that I got was, no, it was the second battle I took my Night Sisters in against a Mon Mothma team, put it on auto, got it done. So I know that if I get, if I need some extra cards, I can go back to that one. But, but yeah. nonetheless, it's get through it as soon as you can and then try one battle in each sector every day with that certain team because it wants you to do it 14 times. So, and there's 14 days of conquest. That's literally what they're telling me, if I understand it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but the, the, that's, that's if you can blitz through it. Now, wh when the energy was cheaper, um, I mean, yeah, I would do like a refresh here or there if I was on a bit, you know, if I was on a roll, if I had some data cards. Um, that allowed me to use a team like lower than 50% stamina. Um, I might do a re refresh. I might do a crisp refresh on something like that. Uh, um, but it would only be like maybe once or twice in the first week because my tactic before um, they made these changes was first seven days, I would just, it would just be a mad dash to complete all five sectors, get as many data cards as I could, and then I would go back and try and do the feats. That's just not possible for me to do. I didn't actually get to the end of Sector 5 in the last Conquest until um, Day 11. So I had three days left. Have you gotten any purples to try, yet? To try and do feet. 
no, I haven't. I got I got yet. massively overpowered in sector one final final battle. Yeah, uh, I've, I've, grays and greens. I haven't even had any blues yet. There has to there has to be crumb doja. We know you guys lurk every once in a while. There has to be something better than there has to be an answer for this. Plus, guys, why are we getting duplicates of the same card in one thing? I know it's a draw, but can't you do N minus one instead of N, please? It's my guess, uh, you know? Yeah. The, 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 do, Doja, you know, Doja and Crumb can listen and hear us and report up the chain, up the wazoo. But once they've listened, heard us, written it down on their notepads and taken it to their chain, you know, taking it up their chain of command, it's out of their hands. So once they... Oh, I know, it, but I want to know why. Well, that's it. I so want to know why they did never, that like that. We're, we're never going to know that. That is something we are never ever going to know, because the 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 the, the higher the, you know the higher rungs of the the CG chain of command they don't have to tell Doja and Crumb why they're doing what they're doing, um, and if they do, they would probably instruct them not to pass that on to the community. That you know, so th this isn't a case. You know, we know that they listen to us and they take our feedback. And that they pass that feedback, that they pass that feedback up their chain of command. We know that they do that. I mean, I've been in streams where Crumb has been furiously writing ideas down on the notepad. Um, there's no doubt in the back of my mind that they pass it up the chain. But once they passed it up the chain, that's it. it it's it's you know we don't know what goes, what happens, or where that feedback goes, or what they do with it. Beyond that, we don't know if it just stops there, if it goes to someone else, if it gets put in an inbox. You know, if it gets put in a suggestion box, you know, I mean, it might be a suggestion box over the top of a bit. <laughs> I was going to say, it's a, there, there's this suggestion box that's circular, wire, wire frame, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but yeah, so, so it's not, you know, and, and the, 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 biggest, the biggest argument is that it's not fun. It was fun. I was getting, I was having more fun when I was getting less rewards than when I was getting more rewards. When I was really, really pushing myself to try and get that sixth box so that I would get relocate material, I wasn't having as much fun as the first three conquests where I was only hitting three or four. You know, I was only hitting box three or four. I didn't care. I was having so much fun with the data cards and the various different teams. It was new. It was fun. It wasn't grindy. I didn't care what cost me, where it cost me it. I was having fun with it. Um, and you know, I'm not having fun with it now, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Speaking of having fun, I almost missed my uh, my ship payout, which I cannot wait for the time change, Neil, when ship payouts mm -hmm. before the show starts, instead of me having to do it, you know, in the pre-show. There we go, executive. Oh, when the when the when the when the clocks, when the go, the back. clocks go back one hour. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But has I know that you brushed off Galactic Challenges because of all the hype and the le and then the letdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we starting to are we starting to get there with you as well with Conquest? Not starting, I'm there. You're there to the point where I'm there. Yeah, I'm there. I just don't care. I want to because I loved it. I I've never liked challenges. From day one, I've not liked... So the, the, the difference between Conquest and Challenges is I've never liked Challenges because I was 100% on board, and this is my own fault. They built up my expectations so high that Challenges was going to be this awesome new game mode. Um, they really, really, really built up my um, expectations. I was on board 100% with the hype, and then they presented us with a, um, in my opinion, and, you know... I know it was very cynical of me at the time. They presented us with a mode with three deliberately messed up, broken areas of the game that the entire community agreed these three things need to be fixed. And then within 24, 48 hours, they said on the forum, yep, we listened to your feedback. We know that you don't like this, this, and this. We're going to change it. 
But I said that before, before they even put it on the forums. I said that these three things have been deliberately left in the game, broken, so that the entire community says, we don't like these three things. We all in one voice say, we don't like them. Please change them. And they kind of get faux grace for, oh yeah, they've picked up the three things and not the, the nine tiny little things. They've just picked up the three things that we left in that were wrong. Conquest, different kettle of fish. When it started off, my God, it was so much fun. That first one. I agree. It was so much fun. I had so much fun with it. And my expectations for it were low. So it was great. Second one, great. Third one, great. Still having an awful lot of fun. The fourth one, I had fun with that. And then they started, then the, 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 the changes started coming in. And I was like, right, okay, I, I've had my fun. I need to knuckle down and be serious about this. I need to get that sip crate. So I worked hard, you know, I, and I got into my routine, blasting through it in the first seven days, going back and doing the beats. And then the last one came out and that was just physically impossible. And after three days and 400 crystals on refreshes, still being in sector three, I was uh, still being in sector two. I was like, this just wouldn't have happened in the previous, you know. So um, by the end of that one, I'd got to the end, but I didn't have time to go back over the feet. I just scraped into um, reward box four. I didn't have fun with it. I'm not having fun with this one, despite trying to follow the guide. And I'm done. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just done. It is. <laughs> don't, that, 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 I will still use my, if I'm logged in and I've got 40 or 60 or 80 energy, multiples of 20, I'll, I'll tap on it because I know I'm only going to get two, three or four battles. So I'll get two, three or four battles. I'll put my max team in, do it out, do it out. I'm not looking at the feats because I don't have the time or the resources to work out what team, what data cards. It's too much time trying to work out what team I need to take in against which team in which node and working out. It's just too much time. It's too, way too much time. And there's not enough energy and it doesn't refresh fast enough. So yeah, screw it. I'm done. A quick thank you to Wardy, um, who has been a supporter of this show for quite a while. Um, he uh, just resubscribed. Um, thank you very much. We are a little behind where we would love to see the revenue from the show come from or be at right now. Um, so Wardy, that, uh, that sub meant so very, very much. Thank you very much from the bottom of our heart. Yes. I'm going to start panhandling um, because the travel ban got lifted between the United States and the UK. So I can get my kids over here now. So money, 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 money. Because I want to be able to save up enough money in my PayPal to get airline tickets to get my daughters from the UK. And I want to get the money to fix the teeth. So, <laughs> so, one but every, I, I, th that's one thing I just want to mention before we go to break. Um, this show is 100% funded by listeners, um, Patreons, Twitch subs. Um, we appreciate every single little bit that comes through. Um, check the show notes if you're listening to this later for ways to support the show. Um, we truly do sincerely appreciate all of the support um, that allows us to take our time to do this show week in and week out. It was strange not doing it last week, Neil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Um, we, we ended up doing it on Sunday, so if you missed that, go check the archives. Um, we do have the show up there now. So, with that being said, let's go ahead, let's take a break, and on the other side of the break, you're going to talk about GAC and how it's been yeah. negatively affected recently. So, yes. we'll be back right after these messages right here on the Escape Podcast. HotBot in Hot Utils is one of the most comprehensive tools for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. With integration into the super useful mod tool Grand Ivory, Hot Utils can help you tackle some of the most difficult aspects of the game. Not sure how to mod your roster for a certain game mode? Use one of the many filters that automatically assigns the right mods to the right character in accordance with your guild needs. 
Now with the digital features that can assist you and your guild officers in territory battles and territory wars, Hot Utils is an amazing value. And don't forget the useful tools for yourself in Grand Arena, like the in-depth and customizable compare feature. Got multiple accounts like Neil, but not the time to remod them all? With this one-stop utility, you can switch between your alts and never miss a mod upgrade or a mod switch before locking into GAC or Territory Wars. Starting at just $5 a month, you don't want to miss out on these great tools. Hot Utils is the new official remodding service for the Escape Pod. Cast. Visit HotUtils.com to learn more. That's H-O-T-U-T-I-L-S.com. And go ahead and spice up your Galaxy of Heroes experience. Podawans, be sure to support the shows brought to you on the Escape Podcast Twitch and YouTube channel by becoming a Patreon. For as little as $2 a month, you can support us and get a little extra for yourself. With tiered rewards, including access to Shitty Bill's Arena tracking bot, after show access, inclusion in the GA Center leaderboards, behind the scenes access, and much more. There is something for everyone on our Discord server. Head on over to Patreon, that is P A T R E O N dot com slash the escape pod and sign up today. Thank you for supporting and listening to the Escape Podcast. Hello, friends. This is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, and I approve this message and am compensated for signups for this service. The world's largest audiobook library is at your fingertips, and the Escape Pod Castaways wants you to try it for free. Head on over to escapepodcastaways.com and click the Going Nerdy Offer button to claim a free audiobook and two Audible Originals. Cancel any time, and it's absolutely free to sign up. Check out Audible and support the Escape Pod Castaways, all for free. See Audible website for details. Restrictions may apply. Hey there, listeners. Merchandise specialist Critty K here. Do you enjoy the Escape Pod and want to support the channel and get something a little extra for yourself as well? Head on over to tpublic.com slash user slash the Escape Podcast and grab a Team Neil, Team Paul, Critty Play, or many other fun Padawan designs on your choice of shirt, cup, sticker, mask, or even a magnet. And be sure to check out the Mrs. Anthony Shirts channel on the Escape Podcast Discord and get the latest info on the other designs I make as well. Sometimes there's even a sale going on, so it is smart to stop on by. Thank you for supporting the Escape Pod Cast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Patreon leaderboard brought to you by the Patreons of the Escape Punk cast, just like we do every single week for 60 of the world's best community-focused content creators of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes on GA Center. We like to thank our kyber, combat kyber combatant or higher Patreons with a little feature we call the Patreon leaderboard. Sign up for this month's 5v5 is, of course, closed, but if you'd like to join us next month, on the Patreon leaderboard, sign up at patreon.com slash the escape pod and we'll get you into the boards next month. And also be sure to check out the full show GA Center on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash escape podcast, hosted by Nevin Ranger. Let's get to our boards. D goes one and two, 4,747 banners, 15 wins, two losses, four holds. That's pretty good for D. Boulder Doobies doing well. Next up, Dark Helmet, 3-0. Banners, 7,965. Wow. 36 wins, 0 losses, 18 holds. I believe that that's what we call a triple crown. Nice job, Dark Helmet. Dr. Jojo. He actually wrote a report. Let's go take a look. 3-0. Round 1, Snooze Fest. Round 2, faced a guy from Howling Ewoks with 910 thousand lifetime he managed to two shot his executor but he beat him by about 60 round three he set a light defense and managed to bugger up a Treya scion versus geos and oh dr jojo did uh but he managed a better ground score than his one shot he couldn't get past the executor wherein is he got one shot on both fleets easy win three and oh 7,908 banners, 36 wins, 2 losses, 7 holds, 36 wins, 3 full clears. That is a triple whammy. 
Let's go take a look at Force Strong. Force Strong goes 1-2, 4,747 banners. 17 wins, 3 losses, 3 holds. Sounded a lot like D did. Hot Sauce, who's not a streamer, but he is an important part of the Escape Podcast community. He's the author of Hot Bots. Go to HotUtils.com and find out more information. 3-0, 7,152 banners, 34 wins, 14 losses, 26 holds which means it was not a triple crown or whammy, but he does go 3-0 and with an impressive banner score. Now, I went 2-1, 6-4, 9-7. 27 wins, 2 losses, 2 holds. My first round, I was able to full clear. Second round, he was able to full clear, and he did it more efficiently. My third round, the one, uh, my 1-1 one one matchups, I ended up facing an auto set, so I wasn't able to full clear. Say la vie. Let's take a look at the final boards this week. Dark Helmet is above Dr. Jojo, who is our current champion. He's up there by uh, 58 banners. Uh, no, 57 banners. 57 banners is the difference there. Hot Sauce hanging in there 3-0. and All he needs is for them to slip up and he'll be at the top of the leaderboard. I'm in the middle 2-1 and one, and D and 4 strong at 1-2 and two apiece. That does it for me. Once again, if you want to join, go to our Patreon, sign up, at, sign up at Kyber Combatant level or higher, and we'd love to feature you next month. I'm Paul Anthony. Be nice to each other, damn it. We want you join the GAC chain gang today. This is the commander of the 506 Procrastination Battalion and the leader of the GAC chain gang. I am sending out a call to action for any Swago content creators on Twitch who would be willing to broadcast their GAC attack rounds alongside some of our best, including Mr. Jigabachi, Dr. Zeppers, Rico1982, and the Bounty Honeys. What is the Chain Gang, you ask? We are an amazing group of content creators who are dedicated on streaming the Grand Arena Championship attack rounds on Twitch. The idea is to provide continuous content back to back from one streamer to the next and allow the viewers to enjoy more Swago content as well as enjoy the variety of streamers that are currently present in the group. If you are interested in joining the Chain Gang, please reach out to myself on Discord at AndyBeads hashtag 7465 or you can send us a message on our Twitter page at ChainGAC. Join us today. We have your back. The Escape Pod cast. And welcome back to the show, everybody. It's the second segment, and we're uh, we're going to talk some more swagger here, aren't we? Paul? Well, of course, of yes. course. Yes, we are. We are. But more specifically, we're going to more specifically we're going to talk about um, uh, we're going to talk about GAC because uh, the first week of this five v five has been. Not as not up to its usual stuff. We we always expect. Um, I mean, I always expect the the first week of every month. It's a little bit slow. That's where you get, you know, that's where you tend to get that round one auto deploy or that round one does not show because you know the the pool of people that you can be um, uh, uh, put up against is larger than as you progress through the weeks because as you as you win and build up through the weeks that pool gets smaller and smaller and smaller and you know normally by the time you're in the last two weeks um especially if you're on a winning streak you're, you're always going to be facing people that um put down you know will you know put down a defense and show up it's, it's not an awful lot of auto deploys but this first week of 5v5 um, I went back and I looked at the numbers um, of all the competitors that we cover on GA Center, and we had 28 auto deploys and or uh, did not shows, which is the highest it's ever been. I went back over a couple of previous months. Normally, we average in that first week between 8 and 12. So there's usually between 8 and 12 um, auto deploys and or does not shows. Uh, in that first week. And, and nine times out of 10, it's somebody that just gets it in week one. They, they don't usually get it in week two, um, uh, sorry, in round two, and they don't usually get it in round three. But, and it is a, an important but to remember, uh, every now and then, if you lose your first round, um, you go into the pool of losers 
that you fight in the second round, that might alternately be the um, uh, the that does not show or the auto deploy. So yeah, twenty eight. Neil, 28. make that um, twenty nine. Yes. My third round, as I said in Patre- in the Patreon leaderboard, was a auto deploy. Was an auto deploy, yeah. So with um, three GLs, so of course I couldn't full clear it. Yeah, I mean um, the wolf, um, the wolf's round one, first round week one, was uh, a five GL auto. Oof. Yeah, it was a five GL. It was a five GL auto deploy. I mean, he persevered and he got through it. But um, I mean, you don't have to because naturally, when it comes to a, a, a an auto, when it comes to an auto deploy, you know that you just need to get a rack up a few wins because your opponent auto deployed, so they're probably not going to show because they've lost the entire top end of their roster. Um, but yeah, no, it, it it just got me thinking. You know, it got me speculating. Why are, are so many people no longer playing in? Uh, why did so many people decide that they weren't going to play in um, week one of um, 5v5? And th- 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 there, there are, I, you know, there are several theories. Obviously, the nerfs don't help. Um, I know a lot of competitors that have based their rosters on working hard on off meta counters, and now those off meta counters no longer work. So there's a the, there's going to be a you know there is going to be that to a certain degree. It's not going to be people that quit the game. Because they're not there to join, you've got you know you can't quit the game and just be put in it. You've, you've got to physically join. But one of the other things that I think um, is uh, is occurring, and it is something that CG can do something about, is the rewards because of conquest, because of the amount of time required on conquest. Um, people are thinking to themselves, "Well, sod it," uh, you know the, the rewards in GAC aren't particularly that good between first and eighth. You know, sure, I'll miss out on a couple of Zetas. Um, you know, I might miss out on a couple of Zetas or, you know, I might miss out on a couple of Omegas. I might miss out on, a, you know, some slicing material. Yeah, so the time sink in GAC, there is still, I mean, there is a time sink for GAC, especially if you want to be competitive. If you want to be competitive and finish first and get the maximum rewards each week you have to become i mean you can still go two and one and finish second or third um you you just can you can still finish second so you can still get decent rewards even with a two and one um but you've still got to put the um you still got to put the time in you, you just do you've got to put the time in you've got to know what your opponent's going to put on defense so that so that you know what to keep for offense and you you need to know what they have trouble with so that you can throw that on defense and you know steal some banners from them. There is a time sink there, but with conquest taking up twice, two, three, four times the amount of time as previous conquests. Now people are thinking to themselves, "Well, I'm I can't spend that hour or two that I spend, you know, looking up SWGOH.GG and and or, or running the DSR bot." Or running some, you know, or going onto Hotbot to tweak things and change things and look things up um, in order to be as successful as I can be in GAC and spend the exact same amount of time on Conquest. So people look at the rewards for Conquest, the rewards for GAC, and they go, well, I'll just join, I'll let it auto deploy, and whatever I get, I get for doing nothing. And that's the kicker. You can join GAC and do nothing all week still get some rewards at the end of the week that's not the case with conquest conquest you actually have to do stuff in order to get rewards so i think what's happening is people have decided not to bother with um gac and i will say out of those 28 the lion's share is division four and below there are more people dnsing and doing auto deploys in divisions four five and six than in three, two, and one. Yes, there are still, I'm not saying there aren't auto deploys in those higher divisions. I'm just saying that it's more likely in the lower divisions because people are looking at, you know, the, the, the lower divisions, uh, a lot of people may have gone for, I mean, I, I, I look at auto deploys that I've had and they don't have any GLs in them, but they've got off meta counters. So they've looked at their roster and gone, I can't be competitive in GAC anymore. I don't have to compete to get some rewards, so I'm just not going to bother. I'll 
not just join, get the trash rewards and concentrate on, you know, and try and concentrate on conquest. So, yeah, it, it, there's no way to know 100% for sure why there's this massive increase. Um, and believe me, I'll be keeping my eye on the numbers. I will check week two and I'll check week three and I'll check week four and it should go down. Uh, it always starts high in week one and then it goes down. And by the time you get to week um, four of each GAC month, it, it, you, you can count on one hand. I mean, the, the competitors that we cover on GA Center, I can count on one hand how many of them are um, um, auto deploys because the people that are in those pools for that final week are people that have competed in the previous three weeks and have actually done well. I have so I, the math that I was doing before I screwed everything up and went to a you know through a commercial and you're talking during it. Um, we got Taliana's numbers before we went live uh, from this past week. The number of players that have been able to be tracked has gone down. The number. And the, the, that's the number of people that log in. Doesn't mean that they join GAC, but they've logged into the game. We saw a reduction of almost 5.5 thousand. Okay. But we saw an increase in divisions one through four by one and a half thousand. So it's the lower end. Yeah, but we knew we kind of knew that was coming. Yeah, it was. You 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 got to remember that you got to remember that the three v three of the the last the previous three v three um um we've had two three v threes and one five v five right so the three v three and then a five v five and then a three v three we kind of. Um, speculated that there would be an uptake because they rebooted GAC. So we kind of speculated that there would be an uptake in those earlier months, in those earlier numbers of GAC um, because of, so, you know, the 3v3 and then the 5v5, we have an uptake because we've had the reboots, but then they do the nerfs and it drops off. And like you said, this, so it, so last month was a five percent drop off in certain divisions of five, what five and a half thousand five five and a half thousand uh, dropped from playing the game. If, if these yep. numbers are to be believed, which mm -hmm. I, I I'm very confident in her numbers. Yep. So we went to four hundred and twenty thousand two hundred and twenty eight players from. 425,646. I know that's not exactly 5.5. It's called rounding. <laughs> we went from less than half a percent of the total amount of people playing in Division 1 to almost 1% of the people playing in Division One, so it's growing about a half a percent each time, or exponentially, I should say. The, I mean, that's just the numbers that are coming in, though. I mean, it's what that that that, that isn't that. There's no way. There's no um, correlation between that and the number of people that are auto deploying. That's true. DNS. That's true. But auto deploys. P these people that she is able to count is actually people that didn't even join, that just logged in. So it's it's counting those people that auto deploy. Those that auto deploy number is it's put they push down the people that don't even join. So there's zeros. Yeah. But it'd be nice to know specifically the people that actually hit join and then who actually compete, as opposed to, you know, just people that get caught up in the numbers that haven't even joined. Thank you. I'd love to know those numbers. <laughs> Thank you, Geek Girl, for gifting the sub to JJ's Productions. Geek Girl also resubscribing with, uh, with her Prime sub. Thank you very, very much. Um, so, uh, yeah. But that that's just... Yeah, it, 
there's just I, they need to do something and they need to do something big and they need to do something quick because um different modes within the game are ble- i mean aside from the people that are quitting altogether various modes of the game are bleeding people they just are they, you know um uh, um not not so much the uh, the playing uh, no sorry not so much the the engagement but the play so somebody that joins and then just doesn't play is still being counted in their numbers they're just not playing you know they 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 they're joining and then just letting their account do everything for them without having to you know set defenses or do any of that um whatsoever i mean calvin awesome in round 1 was up against someone who was a serial auto deployer had to send the guy a message and ask him to set a defense. Well, he he I mean, the guy he didn't... sends people auto deploy. He always begs people not to auto deploy every single yeah. time. Anyway, though, he if 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 he finds if he finds a, if he comes across an auto deployer on swag, uh, on swgoh.gg, then yeah, he will send them a message and say, "Look, I know you're an auto deployer, and I know you don't play, but would you do me a favor and just set a defense for me?" Um, and then you know he'll go in and he'll play around and he'll test some counts because he knows that. His opponent isn't going to fight, um, but it's still, you know, a, a set defense that an opponent isn't going to respond to is still better than an auto yeah. deploy. Auto deploys are boring. We all know that they're boring. Nobody likes doing an auto. For, they suck. We are three minutes away from possibly having a hype train. If somebody wants to help, uh, help uh, start that up. Thank you, Doctor Feelgood. Uh, for and Hellenix just started it. Uh, so we do have a hype train. We will acknowledge every single person in the hype train on Twitch at the end of the hype train. Let's see how high we can get it. Again, we'd love to be able to see a payout at the end of this month. We're not there yet. It would uh, would be appreciated. We do have one going on right now. So thank you very much to Big Country Mags with five subs. <laughs> BCM kicking it, kicking, kicking, <laughs> kicking it, it kicking into it gear. In a big old kicking it into gear, yes. So, uh, yeah. So, just to reiterate, yeah, they, they need to do something because um, people people aren't wanting to, they're joining GAC, but they're not wanting to play as much. Um, and that there are people like me um, that have just kind of switched off with regard to Conquest because they've left their current guild. And gone to a guild doing crank well, i would rather put effort into you know trying to get a couple of million two three million um on um crank or and getting some decent rewards there than you know wasting two three hours every single day on conquest um for for, for a reward i'm never going to reach um and i'm just not going to reach it um and yes there's always somebody in chat whether it's on this or on rsg or on reddit that says you know i can get box six or you know i've only got one gl and i can do it and i'm like brilliant that's How? great i'm really really pleased and i'm really really chuffed for you it'd be great if you could share that yeah. with everybody else but since you're not sharing it i'm just gonna say good for you but i don't care um because you're just saying it yeah oh i can do it really receipts show the damn receipts <laughs> okay because I'm sick and tired of individuals coming in and saying, I did it. Show everybody how you did it. If it's so bloody easy that you were able to do it without a GL, show everybody how you did it. If you yeah, And if you say, oh, I haven't got the time. Really? You haven't got the time? You've got time to spend three hours a day, you know, two or three hours a day on Conquest, progressing and doing feats and repeating matches over and over again. But you haven't got the time to, what, record it? Or just type out, oh, I used this squad this many times to do this. So, I, I you know, great. If you're doing it, good on you. Um, uh, try not to be so bloody selfish and tell everybody else how to do it. I, you know me, how, how much I hate challenges. But the, the Empire one came along and I was able to smash into orbit um, tier 10 of challenges um, with, a, with five gear 11 um imperial troopers and i didn't just want to say oh you can actually do i showed everybody in the after show how to do it and then i made a video and i threw it on the yep. channel so it's look here here you go you can do this challenge with moderately not heavy 
that there were no there are no 6e mods on my gear 11 imperial troopers they're all golds purples and blues um but for some reason they were good enough to be able to destroy the um the mandalorians and get me max rate red uh, the red crate with one battle so that that's me saying i can do it here's how you do it um it, but if you're just going to be in chat and say it, it, it's it's not crap i was able to do it great show everybody else how you bloody do it you know sure don't leave it to end or be all exactly dynasty. share the wealth share the show, love show your work it's like if i give you an impossible you know if i give you you know if i give you a uh, <laughs> an impossible math equation and everyone's like that's really really difficult and then you come back with the answer oh it's this it's like Brilliant, great. Show you working. Oh well, it was easy. I, I, you, no, I show used. I used. how you I used out. an APK. <laughs> that's how they did it. Well, that's another thing. That's another thing that's got. That's another thing that's got me concerned. And I haven't talked about it, but you know what? Sod it. I'll talk about it now. Um, okay. <laughs> we know that AP. We know that APK hacking goes on in the game, right? What's to stop somebody figuring out how to use an APK hack on Conquest so that they can get the red box? Nothing. Mm, I think there. I it's think not, there's stats that would show CG that it was used. Yeah, there would be if they were looking for it. So are they? Are but they looking gonna, for it? Is the question? They, they, they you know, the, think think about it. That there are people that get reported as cheats in PvP that don't get banned unless there's a massive influx of outrage to, towards that individual. There are people that have cheated in PvP on GACs and have not been punished for it. You think that CG is going to be monitoring hundreds of thousands of users in a PvE format? There's going to be a couple of people in there that are like, you know what, this sucks. Um, how do I APK hack it? And then that screws over people that, you know, it, it, even more. It just screws people over even yeah. more. So, yeah. So yes, I'm. I'm getting. You know, it it it, it frustrates me. Really, really, really frustrates me. Um, All right, we yeah. do have to go to a break. We're up against it. If we want to uh, be able to talk to Mandalorian um, for for a good amount of time, so we'll table this discussion. We may come back to it next week. I would love to, especially if uh, if we have some answers on that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, coming up after the break, Mandalorian bot designer Man joins us and enjoy this story time uh, coming up in these messages. Story time with Uncle Thad about the Night Sister zombie. HotBot in Hot Utils is one of the most comprehensive tools for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. With integration into the super useful mod tool Grand Ivory, Hot Utils can help you tackle some of the most difficult aspects of the game. Not sure how to mod your roster for a certain game mode? Use one of the many filters that automatically assigns the right mods to the right character in accordance with your guild needs. Now with the digital features that can assist you and your guild officers in territory battles and territory wars, Hot Utils is an amazing value. And don't forget the useful tools for yourself in Grand Arena, like the in-depth and customizable compare feature. Got multiple accounts like Neil, but not the time to remod them all? With this one-stop utility, you can switch between your alts and never miss a mod upgrade or a mod switch before locking into GAC or territory wars. Starting at just $5 a month, you don't want to miss out on these great tools. Hot Utils is the new official remodding service for the Escape Pod. Cast. Visit HotUtils.com to learn more. That's H-O-T-U-T-I-L-S dot com. And go ahead and spice up your Galaxy of Heroes experience. Podawans. Be sure to support the shows brought to you on the Escape Podcast Twitch and YouTube channel by becoming a Patreon. For as little as $2 a month, you can support us and get a little extra for yourself. With tiered rewards, including access to Shitty Bill's Arena tracking bot, after show access, inclusion in the GA Center leaderboards, behind the scenes access, and much more. There is something for everyone on our Discord server. 
head on over to Patreon. That is P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash The Escape Pod and sign up today. Thank you for supporting and listening to The Escape Podcast. Podcast for kids. It's really cool. Hello there, Potawans, and welcome back to Story Time with Uncle Thad and the Escape Podcast for Kids. Today we are going to talk about the Night Sister Zombie and where in the canon her kit actually comes from. Before we can really look the Night Sister Zombie, we have to get a better understanding of who the Night Sisters were in Star Wars. The Night Sisters were a clan of magic-wielding females who lived on the planet Dathomir. These deadly divas had learned to harness the natural power of their planet and wield it like a Jedi or Sith wields the Force. I guess you could consider it two sides of the same coin. Because of their connection to their planet and their powerful dark side vibes it gave off, not many of the Coven left the planet. This allowed them to deepen their connection to the planet's magic and strengthen their ability to use it. For generations, these martial ladies defended themselves against colonizers, would-be invaders, and other forces. They even developed a symbiotic relationship with a cuddly, lovable Rancor, which is frustrating that we don't have a Night Sister riding a Rancor, or that the Night Sisters aren't as powerful against the Rancor. That's Neither here nor there, though. Back to the story time! It was during these times that these Dathomirians developed deep lore and traditions around life and death. Although the power they wielded was connected to the dark side, it did not consume them like it did the Sith. This allowed them to tap into abilities the Jedi couldn't, while at the same time not be destroyed by their obsessions like many Sith. Ultimately, the Night Sisters' main focus was the survival of the clan. They would use any tool necessary to keep themselves protected from outside forces. They used energy bows, weapons of all kinds, and even the Knight Brothers to keep themselves safe and would discard anything that no longer served a purpose. But even in death, the Knight Sisters continued to serve and protect their coven. When a Knight Sister died, burial cloth was washed in magical water, then hand braided while a spell of protection was cast. The bodies were cleansed and adorned with fragrant oils and then mummified with these anointed cloths. Once properly prepared, the Night Sister was placed in a burial pot and hung from structures that resembled the natural flora of Dathomir. These Night Sisters hung on the pot until it was time for them to be called again to battle. It was one of these undead Night Sisters that appears in the mobile game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Now. One last thing before we jump into the Night Sister zombie kit. I have it on good authority that the developers over at Capital Games lovingly refer to this Dathomirian dame as Karen. And clearly, I'm not just making that up. But enough of that. Let's look at Karen's kit. Anyone familiar with a plague of any kind understands that the closer you are to it, the more likely you are to be infected by it. So it makes sense that Karen's basic attack would leave you feeling less tenacious, more vulnerable, right? Because it's not like any of us have any experience with a plague, right? Guys? Her first special ability is called Feed, and what an apt name. This is clearly self-explanatory for what would a zombie be if it didn't feed? One of the things though that I absolutely love about Karen's first unique ability is the same thing that I love about the B1 battle droid and the dark trooper. It's an ability that brings a dead character back to life. It represents the never ending onslaught of the undead, which is exactly what the Night Sisters zombie represents. But the coup de grace of Karen's kit really is the Undying Sacrifice ability. This is the ability that allows her to sacrifice herself when another Night Sister would have been defeated. Because that's what we saw. The Night Sister zombie was brought back to life, or was given a second chance of life to protect her sisters and to keep those who could have died from dying a death. Well. That's all for me this week. Stay tuned next week for more story time with Uncle Thad on the Escape Podcast for Kids. 
Hello friends, this is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, and I approve this message and am compensated for signups for this service. The world's largest audiobook library is at your fingertips, and the Escape Pod Castaways want you to try it for free. Head on over to escapepodcastaways.com and click the Going Nerdy offer button to claim a free audiobook and two Audible Originals. Cancel any time, and it's absolutely free to sign up. Check out Audible and support the Escape Pod Castaways, all for free. See Audible website for details. Restrictions may apply. Hey there, listeners. Merchandise specialist Critty K here. Do you enjoy the Escape Pod and want to support the channel and get something a little extra for yourself as well? Head on over to tpublic.com slash user slash the Escape Podcast and grab a Team Neil, Team Paul, Critty Play, or many other fun Padawan designs on your choice of shirt, cup, sticker, mask, or even a magnet. And be sure to check out the Mrs. Anthony Shirts channel on the Escape Podcast Discord and get the latest info on the other designs I make as well. Sometimes there's even a sale going on, so it is smart to stop on by. Thank you for supporting the Escape Podcast. Receiving incoming transmission. Um, welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. This week's incoming transmission is uh, it's a developer. So, Paul, why don't you introduce our developer guest for this week's incoming transmission? Absolutely. You know, a lot of people like to think that computer nerds and computer developers are, you know, homebodies. But this guy um, has been to Norway, Iceland, Cuba, Croatia, Galapagos Islands. He likes hiking, biking, kayaking traveling and he even apparently turned an suv into a camper neil i know you're uh that's that's something up your alley <laughs> um mm, yes, we're, yes. we're going to be uh talking to him about his uh galaxy of heroes experience as well apparently he also can juggle he wanted to make sure that i knew he could juggle when i asked him <laughs> about things um but you know i've always wanted the chance to just ask somebody something this way what's up man <laughs> what's up Paul? <laughs> we have man udia um which is a go ahead go ahead explain the the name origin how, how did you come up with man udia so the name was actually one of the names that um is given to you there you the go <laughs> kind of generic and i and i have people a lot of times saying you know i think i've fought you before and i'm like well probably not it might be my doppelganger but you never know <laughs> so um you you, you kind of did what kate gaming did and just ran with the name ran with the name they gave you um you know you could change that for free i'm just saying uh, but <laughs> once you could do it once um but you are the mind behind the Mandalorian bot. That's M H A N N Delorean. Um, yes. And we're gonna get exactly into what the bot can do, but let's start off by, you know, let, let's let's find out what inspired you to do this in the first place. How long have you been playing, and what is your aquatic status? So I started playing in March of 2017. So not not quite a day one player, um, but pretty consistently every day since then. Um, and so I'm about 6.2 million, um, not a heavy duty spender, spent here and there, maybe about $500 or so. So by whale standards, certainly not um, very much at all. Um, and as far as like what inspired the bot, so 
it didn't even really start out as something that was practical or statistical in any way. It was more to give one of our guild mates a hard time. So <laughs> okay. I had watched it. To, yeah. So every every guild, you have that guy you just kind of, or maybe several guys you got to give a hard time to. So I had watched a tutorial on making bots, and there was a guy that made a GIF image pop up every time a certain keyword uh, was mentioned. So I had talked to my guild leader and said, you know, do you mind if I try to give this a shot? And he said, okay, and kept it kind of quiet with the other guild members. And um, what I did is made it so that when a certain guild member's name was mentioned, a princess would pop up uh, every time. So all of a sudden people start mentioning the guild member's name and they see a princess popping up and they kind of started to figure out that it was intentional. And that's, that's what my bot was originally meant for. Um, just to kind of have a little bit of fun in the guild and um, just, you know, a little, little oh, something okay. different. Not in a bullying way, in a fun way, right? Yes. yes okay. Certainly in a fun okay. Way. Was, I, was, uh, I was about to get he, on you for that. Yeah, he was he was definitely in on it. And um, he, he had several suggestions for other guild members after that about what GIF images could pop up for them as well. Okay, so what... Um, you, you mentioned to me that you started this, uh, you, you started to create this bot just for your guild in February of 2021. Yeah, well, I went public. Uh, oh, the pub you went public with it February 2021. Yeah. How long, how long was it from the inception of this bot, I guess, is the question. I'd say it's been probably a good couple of years okay. at this point. So you've kept this so kind of up your sleeve. Yeah, I really, really got to like fine tune it, develop a lot of special things like just for my guild. And then somebody came into our server and, and saw what my bot was doing. And they were like, well, how much would you charge to put that out in another guild? And then I, I really had to rethink it because it was really designed just to work on a single Discord server, our server. Um, but then trying to expand it out to where it is now, it definitely took a little bit of, of rethinking because that's never what it was really meant for. But you figured it out. Yes, definitely. And, and I really thank um, my guild leader and assistant guild leader at the time. Um, they really gave me the chance. They didn't know me from a hole in the wall. They're like, here's this new guy and he wants to make a bot for our server. All right, we'll, we'll trust him. We'll give him a shot and see what he does. Did you reach out to any other bot developers in this process? Do you, do you, you know, in the credits, do you have to, men do you have to, you know, mention somebody? Yeah, I definitely had a ton of help. Um, I've used a lot of, um, talked with um, Hot Sauce a little bit about some of the stuff he's done. Um, I've talked with the guys over at swgoh.gg. Sep, um, yep. They've been huge. Um, <laughs> Just because of the volume of data that I'm starting to process, I really had to kind of okay it with them and, and make sure that it was something that they would allow my bot to do. Um, because it is more than the average user just kind of goes on and looks at data. Um, so there's been, yeah, there's been so many people. Um, the developer at Echo Baseball, I've, I've talked with him too about different things. So yeah, there's been a lot of developers that I've just gotten ideas from and, and thoughts. Neil, got any questions so far? Yeah, um, I, I, sorry about that. We had some engine trouble. I heard an explosion in the engine room, and I had to quickly rush off to make sure that you know we weren't going to crash into a planet or a small moon. So, well, that was no moon, that, that was but one. yeah, so I, I met. <laughs> yeah, that was no. So I, I missed a. I missed a little. Bit I, he, he's start, slight. So he's well, slightly aquatic. You know, he's slightly aquatic and has been playing since uh, since two thousand seventeen. Uh, has um, making this bot um, kind of like uh, made you think, you know what, is, is this just your first bot or is this your own? Bot? Or are you thinking to yourself, right, I, I've done this. I'd love to have a bot that does X, Y, and Z. Because this bot does A, B, and C. And you're now thinking to yourself, you know what, I've done this one. I've taken it public. Um, what else could I do? Is there, is there something else I could do a bot? Well, I think I, I've really thought about kind of bringing some of the features that the bot started out with in my original guild to the public. 
Um, I have a lot of the statistical stuff down and analyzing data and getting reports, which, you know, that's great for, I think, the high-end guilds. But I really think maybe some of those, those fun features um, or even some of the um, administrative features where you can, I know there are bots that already welcome people to servers and, you know, send messages, things like that. But in our server, we use my bot for that as well. So I'm, I'm thinking of starting to bring some of those other features that I've had for about a year and a half now in our guild out to other guilds. So not really a new bot per se, but maybe expanding it in the direction that my guild is using it as well. Mm -hmm. Go go ahead. Uh, do you think it'll take as long? Do you think it'll take as long to do the the new stuff? Because obviously, you know, this this one that you put out to the public, you know, you will have spent um, a, a huge amount of time at the beginning, you know, getting yeah. help and advice from other people. Now that you're more proficient at bot making, do you think it's going to take you as long to be able to do these other bots? Yeah, I don't. I don't really think it would because a lot of the code for the bot is there. Um, it's just right now specific to one guild, but making it more general so that it can it can work in any guild um, isn't really that bad. Really, once the the logic is there, it just has to be generalized to work for for all guilds. So, mm -hmm. no, I don't, I don't really think it would. All right, so. Let's say I have no clue on what your bot can do. If if you had a long, I'm not going to ask you for an elevator pitch, but uh, if you had a moment to to sell somebody on a trade show floor, um, on on why they need Manbot, why why do I need Manbot in my life, man? <laughs> so a lot of bots out there, I think they can provide a snapshot of performance or how you're doing. Um, even SWGOH, they, .gg, they have a history of like your fleet rank, your arena rank, but I don't really see a lot of bots out there that are tracking your mod queue, your gear queue, and your GP for years at a time. Um, I really don't think there's any database that you can go to and look up you know, how your performance has been, say, over the past six months. Um, so that's really what my bot does that I think is is different. It uh, keeps track of uh, those main statistics I said, your ranks, your galactic power, uh, your mod queue, and your gear queue. And I keep track of it every day for the time that your the bot is installed um, in your guild. And you get reports on it each week. So officers will get reports that highlight um, how different members are doing in comparison to each other. And the whole guild will get reports on just how they're progressing as a guild, how, how they've increased over time. You can also look at it in terms of like the past week, past month, past year. Um, one thing I can't do is people have asked me, can you go back and say, if I install the bot tomorrow, can I see how my performance from four and a half years ago? Um, and the answer yeah, like is giving like finding a baseline. So it's like they want to yeah. know what the baseline was from 12 months ago or from 24 months ago. You can't do that. that the bot can't right. Do that. Right. I don't know of any besides CG itself. I don't know of any way to access data that's years and years old on a player. Um, so I can only start downloading data from day one. Once you install, you have no day zero capability. Right. Day zero is essentially when you install the bot and it takes that first snapshot of, of all the members in the guild. That would be like the day zero, not day zero when you started the game. That That's what I mean. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mustang Groot says, my bot would conclude that I'm bad at GAC, but good at other things. Very bad at GAC. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, what, what information and can... What information um, exactly is it able to tell me about, you know, say I'm, I'm an officer in my guild, and can individual users themselves get their information if their guild leader or a guild member is a, is a man, man bot man? <laughs> yeah, so as far as officers, they get... Uh, a more detailed report of 
who's who's performing the best in the group and also who's performing um, the worst. That information, especially the lower performers, I try to keep that more towards um, the officers. Um, the officers also get a report every week that shows all 50, well, everyone who's in the guild, um, it'll show all the members and it breaks down the, the GP, the mod queue, the gear queue, and it basically color codes how all the all the increases for every member and it very quickly will show if a member is in green they're one of the top performers in the guild more of a yellow they're kind of in the middle and red they're one of the more bottom performing members in the guild. so you can so figure a, out who truly is dragging you down yeah and i think i think looking at all those measures is good i think most people would agree that just an increase in gp alone doesn't necessarily indicate a huge improvement in the quality of your roster, but when you tie it in with the mod queue and the gear queue, I think it, it tells more of a complete story. You have no way of gathering TB stats or anything like that. You're simply getting the data that's publicly available, but you're compiling it, correct? Or can I use this for territory battles and know exactly who's getting three waves completed out of the entire week? So yeah, right now it's pretty much like you had said, just compiling and, and analyzing the data that I can access through. Um, I actually use two APIs. I use the uh, swgoh.gg, which is which is great. Um, the only downside to that is if the user doesn't have an account on there, then I can't get the so data. So you've gone help that's as well. I, <laughs> yes, that's where I use the swgoh.help um, as kind of the backup to that. So. Um, so those are the, the two that I use to kind of to get the data. But yeah, I pretty much just can compile what's already out there and, and put it in a nice neat package and present it uh, as a report to the guild. Neil, I don't... And you would ask... Uh, go ahead. Sorry, I, th I think you also asked about individual members. Yeah, and, like, like can, um, can I, yes, can I can go you... and say, hey, hey, I want to know how I'm doing. Yep, you can you can run a report just on your data, looking at your your GP, your mod queue, your rank, um, any of that. Uh, you can also run a report that will compare your data to specifically one or two other guild members. So if you want to like get in kind of a friendly competition and <laughs> see how you're doing versus someone else, you can you can look at both of your data. Neil, uh, you, you looked like you had a question there. No, no, no. I was just going to say, um, uh, is it just the guild officers that are going to see all of the information for the entire guild? Is, is, this, so the, is, this, is, this, is this primarily a tool for guild leaders and guild officers? So as far as the information about lower performing members, I try to limit that to guild officers. But the weekly report about how the guild is progressing with their galactic power, the mod queue of the entire guild and the gear queue of the guild, those reports are public um, for all members to see every week. And, and they're in spreadsheets. Yes, everything is organized in, in spreadsheets. And um, I think, was it Neil? You said you're, you're the big no, fan I'm, of the spreadsheet. I, I know, Paul's the, Paul's <laughs> oh, Paul. okay. I'm, I'm the yeah. spreadsheet guy because I, I was, a, I, I am taking a back seat right now because one of our Patreons, Dr. Feelgood, has come in. He learned everything from me as far as running a territory battle, and he has been blowing it out of the water. So I'm actually able to, I, I'm actually able to, to sit back. He's doing an amazing job, uh, but we use um, SWGOH sheets as our, uh, as our TB director, if you will. Um, and it's, it's just a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of fun getting my hands into these numbers. Cause we use them for territory, wa territory wars, territory battles. Um, you know, that same sheet for territory battles can be used for territory wars as well. If you know how to use it. Um, and so it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Could you? So, I mean, uh, you 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 say you say that you can you you can get data that already exists from uh, swgoh.gg, um, but obviously, just regarding this, it's obviously you know day zero is from you know when they join. Um, 
could you do other bots um, to scrape um, different types of data from the, the history that uh, swgoh.gg has in order to make other bots? Um, I'll yeah, give you an absolutely. example. Could you, could, you, could you make a bot that gives um, a competitor the history of their opponents in spreadsheet form? So mm, I, I so see I, where so you're I going, Neil. Ally, so I have, so I have, I have the ally code for my opponent, right? And I want to know how they do on five v five because I'm competing against them in five v five. If I want to know how they did on all the previous ones, I have to click on every single page and every single round, and then I have to scroll down and see how they did. Would you be able to create a bot that I could put the ally code in for a person, run it, and it brings up not all, because it's not relevant. You know, a, a, a 5v5 match from 12 months ago is completely irrelevant to a 5v5 <laughs> match today. But could you bring up the history of their last 12 5v5 rounds and how well they did? So three months. And what they used. Would you be able to do three? No, no, no. Month. A month. The last full. Oh, so the rounds. last 12 rounds. Okay. Yeah. They're like, cause, cause you got, and the, the, the only reason why I'm saying the last 12 rounds is because it alternates 5v5, 3v3, 5v5. So what a person I'm, what I'm looking at is what they did in their previous 5v5. Going to the, the 5v5 before that would take me back four months. And we all know how a roster can change over a four month period. And that's why I would say that that type of history isn't as relevant as looking at a person's last 5v5. Would you be able to, you know, could you could you create a bot doing that that would bring up a person's uh, history of, you know, so and it would be, you know, it would bring up the last five v five and the last three v three because it would depend, you know, if 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 you're in a three v three, bringing up the last twelve rounds of three v three and the last twelve rounds of five v five, it would be useful to see those knowing go, you know, going into a round. Knowing what their record and I'm gonna I'm gonna interject uh, on that, Neil. Um, are you also wanting to see what they set, or are you just wanting stats? No, I mean it, it would be it would be um, it would be nice to know um, what they faced, but um, ultimately um, just knowing how they did, you know how your opponent, you know how your opponent does, you know. Um, from a, you know, do they auto deploy? You know, do they even compete? You know, are they an auto deployer? Are they a DNSer? You know, are they someone who gets twelve and zero? Are they someone that goes six and six? You know, just little, you know, little, you know, uh, that that would be the basic information that I would love to know um, about my opponent's uh, history from the previous five v five or from the previous three v three. It would just be a bonus knowing what they had, you know, what they did or did not do. Because here's the thing. If I know that they've lost, uh, I'm, I'm, when I'm scouting someone on swgoh.gg, I want to know how they did when they lost, not how they did when they won. Because if, if they've lost, I want to know what their opponent beat them on and what their defense, I can see from swgoh.gg what they put on defense and how their opponent beat them. Yeah. Um, but having a snapshot of their previous 12 rounds, whether it's 3v3 or 5v5 and how they did, lets me then know, right, I need to go to this round of this week um, on swgoh.gg and see what went wrong for them, what team they had troubles with, uh, and how they're... And then would you be comfortable in keeping up with that every week? Because when it changes weeks, you're going to have to say, okay, pull these last 12 instead of these, uh, you know, pull from these four date ranges instead of these four date ranges. It, would that, I guess, be something that would interest you in doing? Yeah, I think one thing I've learned from working with SWGOH.GG is that the website itself and the API um, are, are definitely very different. So information that you can access in one sometimes is not always accessible in the other. So in order to be able to do that, it would just be a matter of if all that information that you can access 
through the website, you know, using a browser, is it also accessible through the API? And if it is, then um, very, yeah, definitely doable. If it isn't, I know the guys over there right now are working on version two of their API. Yep. So definitely <laughs> um, a good idea to go put a bug in the ear of one of them to say, hey, make this available in version two if you can. Um, yeah, and it, yeah, that would definitely be something that is very doable. Did you have you noticed? See something. Oh, go something, ahead, go ahead, Neil. I, I, I mean, I, I was going to say that the selling, the selling. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking this over in my head. I'm going to be going and having a word with Seth at some point <laughs> over the weekend. Um, but something like this, uh, something a bot like that could potentially drive a lot of traffic to SWGOH.gg because if you get okay, my previous opponent went eleven and one. So I'm looking and thinking, crap, okay, so they're good. I need to know what went wrong on that one. So it tells you that, you know, in, in week two, round two, they lost. So I can, so I'm, I'm, I know exactly where I'm going on SWGOH. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if it's possible to put hyperlinks or anything in there, um, but that's the kind of thing that would be an excellent selling point for um, SWGOH.gg if they made that information available in the API that people could make a bot of. Um, so just, just a, just a thought, because I, I, I don't, I have neither the time nor the patience to um, write a bot. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still halfway through coding. You're a designer, um, not a programmer. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm halfway <laughs> through the, the coding for the, um, for the, for the hotkey for my blue stack so that it does all my dailies. Uh, I'm up to doing galactic war, challenges and fleet challenges i haven't got any further than that yet because those were the three easiest ones to do so i just go mm -hmm. shift and a and it does all those three things for me straight away um and and it took me it took me a couple of hours to well, get that, that well back. neil we have inspired things you and i and also um you have for my guild have inspired things that have made it to gg um did you notice man when um, when you look up a guild, you now see how many Galactic Legends everybody has. You're did, welcome. Yes. We, we, we said, hey, awesome. can we get this at a quick glance? And he's like, oh, that'd be easy. Pop, pop, pop. How does this look? <laughs> so, um, and Neil, you and I inspired the whole stat breakdown that you could just event yes. at a glance. Yeah. So, you know, we, we're, we, we have a lot of thanks to swgoh.gg for everything that they've done and the fact that you know they listen um the, all these things brought to us from the community as well to this um we are sadly running out of time i know i told i told you i'd only keep you till about 10 um but is there something we didn't talk about your bot um other than you are now currently in 75 servers Congratulations on that, which means yes, you can be verified by yes. Discord. Uh, but guys, get this bot in your server because it is it is very, very good. I wish that it had history, but no better day to start than the day you're listening to this podcast. But um, is there anything that I missed? Because I've got one more question. No, I was... Yeah, I was going to touch on on the, the being able to get verified after I submit my my license, my social security card, my passport, and <laughs> and all those other documents. But yes, that was what and, I was going to mention. And your firstborn <laughs> child, yeah. Yes, ex exactly. Um, so if people don't feel like clicking the show links or or reading chat, can you tell people an easy way to find Manbot? Yeah, the, the easiest way, honestly, if you go into Google and type Mandalorian bot, it'll it'll pop right up. Um, but I you also spell have, it different. Uh, um, that's true. Yes, you have to spell it M H A N N Delorean, Ma Mandalorian bot. Um, you can also find it um, on Discord if you um, search for my server. I have a link on there where you can install the bot. You can read all about it. Um, Patreon. I also, if you Google Mandalorian bot, my Patreon will come up, uh, and there's links in there as well to my to my server. Yeah, it, this, 
you know, we have guests on that we ask you guys to go watch, go like, go, uh, you know, or subscribe to their YouTube channels or whatnot. Guys, this is one of the ones where I'm imploring you to, th this is one of the ones that you want to invest in for your guild. This is, this is the real deal. Mandalorian bot. Go check it out. Neil, anything, uh, anything else for our guest? No, all good. Stuff. All right. Any final words, Mon? Hey, thank you so much, guys, for having me on. I appreciate you helping me just get the word out and uh, get to talk to people a little bit about something that I'm I'm really passionate about. Well, I will. You know what? We're gonna do a long form um, interview with you in the future. Don't know if it'll be this weekend. Don't know exactly when, but we want to get you for a long form interview where we're gonna basically walk you through how to use your bot to its fullest extent and we uh we look forward to doing that uh look for that on the uh on a tepsi spotlight in the near future but for now thank you mon for coming on the show coming up in this break the long-awaited conclusion to the previous episode of heli and the noob it's very emotional grab your handkerchiefs you are going to need them we'll be back right after these messages right here on the escape pod cast Hotbot in Hot Utils is one of the most comprehensive tools for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. With integration into the super useful mod tool Grand Ivory, Hot Utils can help you tackle some of the most difficult aspects of the game. Not sure how to mod your roster for a certain game mode? Use one of the many filters that automatically assigns the right mods to the right character in accordance with your guild needs. Now with the digital features that can assist you and your guild officers in territory battles and territory wars, Hot Utils is an amazing value. And don't forget the useful tools for yourself in Grand Arena like the in-depth and customizable compare feature. Got multiple accounts like Neil, but not the time to remod them all? With this one-stop utility, you can switch between your alts and never miss a mod upgrade or a mod switch before locking into GAC or Territory Wars. Starting at just $5 a month, you don't want to miss out on these great tools. Hot Utils is the new official remodding service for the Escape Pod. Cast. Visit HotUtils.com to learn more. That's H-O-T-U-T-I-L-S dot com. And go ahead and spice up your Galaxy of Heroes experience. Potawans. Be sure to support the shows brought to you on the Escape Podcast Twitch and YouTube channel by becoming a Patreon. For as little as $2 a month, you can support us and get a little extra for yourself. With tiered rewards, including access to Shitty Bill's Arena Tracking Bot, After Show Access, Inclusion in the GA Center Leaderboards, Behind the Scenes Access, and much more. There is something for everyone on our Discord server. Head on over to Patreon, that is P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, slash the escape pod and sign up today thank you for supporting and listening to the escape podcast the following episode of heli and the noob has a character based on a real person permission was granted to use the name and virtual likeness and, and now, now time, time for, for something, something completely, completely shameless. shameless when we last saw our antagonists they ran into enemies on corellia they were facing down two of tc14's greatest creations a heated battle ensued. Serves them right. Nobody likes Hellenix. Both Hellenix and the noob performed maneuvers most of us would just laugh at. Thank God for them, the victorious Viking found them on their way to their ship and joined them in this fight. Let's pick back up with this latest episode of Heli and the Noob to see if these fugitives from the law get their comeuppance. Newbie, special move. And make it count. Here goes nothing. Oh, come on! Those blasters are the most overpowered weapons available to us. They've destroyed Beskar reinforced, quintuple layered Durasteel with Mithral mesh in the past. And now against these two rock clowns, not even a scratch? <sighs> Alright, whatever. Time for my special move. Oh, jeez. You gotta be kidding me. What in the space hell? Even that does no damage? 
They're rock creatures, Hello Linux. Lightning attacks have no effect on them. Haven't you ever played any Pokemon games? This is getting stupid. Shaman, my man. Do something. Uh, I guess I'll do my special move? <clears throat> you shall not pass. Oh, for crying out loud, a taunt. What good will that do us? What's the problem this time, Hello Lennox? We need to eliminate these rock guys, not divert their attacks. Their attacks don't even cause any serious damage. This battle's gonna go past five minutes, and I never let it last for more than five minutes. Seriously, Drum Monkey? Um, Hello Lennox, I just finished reading these guys' kits. You are not going to like this. Hurry up, newbie. The timer's counting down. Spill the beans already. Give me the short version of whatever it is you found. Well, the short version is these are the newest Galactic Legends released by the SSP devs. Basically, without an ultimate ability, you can't damage them. Let's stun them this time. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Now we're stunned. This sucks. Well, maybe if we didn't stop for space... Yeah, Rose. We wouldn't be in this predicament in the first place. Meatbag. You know what, noob? Why don't you just shut up? If you got nothing helpful to offer, why keep talking? All you ever do is complain. Guys? Me? Complain? Oh, that's rich. Especially coming from you, who calls himself the Salty Spartan. Oh, no, 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 no. I've earned the right to complain, noob. I've been at this for almost six years. You just picked up this game and have no idea how much I've sacrificed for this garbage content. Guys. Oh yeah, well, fine. I'm gonna go buy a hyperdrive bundle pack and- What good will a hyperdrive pack do? You can't equip it mid-battle. Plus, it's gonna violate your free-to-play pledge. And I am not in the mood to listen to Neil rag on us for dumping money into the SSP coffers. Guys. What? what? I still have my summoning move. And I know exactly who to summon. Here goes. <clears throat> By the power of Swago, I summon the bravest! Huh, huh, huh. Isn't he cute? Huh, huh, huh. Yeah, he's adorable. Huh, huh, huh. What's it gonna do? Huh, huh, huh. Yeah, tickle us to death. Huh, huh, huh. Whoa. Okay, Mr. Viking Man, who is that character? He seems very, very cool. I want a formal introduction. I bet we could be great friends. He seems exactly like the type of character we need to join us for our mission to confront TC-14. Noob, don't you know who this is? Pipe down, both of you. You are in the presence of greatness. Show some class, please. Yes, kind soul. We are humbled. We thank you. Without you, we would not have ended our non-stop bickering and overcome these adversaries. Your strength and poise are an eternal lesson to us all. Your example is one we should all always strive toward achieving. We are humbled by your appearance and appreciate your brief intervention. May the force be with you, always. I, I, I can barely believe it. Okay, will somebody explain to me exactly what just happened? You see, young adventurer, that was the bravest entity this galaxy has ever known. That was Minnie Snowwalker, a being of legend who once walked among us in this realm and now travels the nether realm of the Force. As the Wills once wrote in their journals, Minnie Snowwalker was a being whom, despite his small stature and young age, could face impossible odds. Without fear, odds that would make even the strongest among us crumble in sheer terror. Unfortunately, a dark entity of despair, born of the fourth sign, confronted Minnie, and an epic battle ensued. Sadly for us, the little one departed our realm after losing his fight against that vile foe. However, although defeated in that battle, he did not truly lose. For the legend says, if we merely remember him, he will never truly be lost. 
and he will always walk among us. For his ally is the Force, and a powerful ally it is. His name is Mini Snowwalker, and it shall never be forgotten. For he was the bravest among us, and his example will forever be one we should each be inspired by. While gone from this realm, Mini Snowwalker is eternal. Well, I'm honored. As you should be, young one. Now, let's all head towards your ship and make our way to Coruscant. This episode dedicated to Mini Snowwalker, 2006 to 2021. May the Force be with you. That was quite touching. Mini Snowwalker was indeed a hero. I almost don't want to make fun of the lethargic Laconian at this point. Almost. Oh, who am I kidding? Will the nerve violate his sacred free-to-play pledge? And will his doing so cause a never age? Will cartoon Hellenic's pit stop at a coffee shop for Freddo Espresso while en route to Coruscant? We all know the Greek is addicted to caffeine. Will the victorious Viking crack both these guys' skulls with his mod hammer? I'm hoping. Yes. I'm even willing to pay good money to see this. Would you like to see the same? If you answered yes to this question, then all you have to do is make sure to stay tuned to the Escape Pod cast every Friday so you never miss a single episode of Ellie and the Noob. And we are back. Um, so, yeah, Hellenix, amazing, amazing job. Well done with that, uh, with that tribute and the uh, conclusion of that story arc. We certainly 100% look forward to seeing the next story arc. Um, I'm not crying. It's raining in here. Uh, <laughs> but no, we did. Uh, I do want to, for those who weren't able to see the chat, um, this, that, pre that previous episode that you just listened to or, or watched was, uh, passed by Santa Jedi, which is Minnie Snowwalker's, uh, grandfather, and he and his wife both gave it their blessing and found it hilarious, quote unquote. Quote, actually, quote unquote, the video is hilarious. My wife and I loved it. You honored him very well. Thank you. You have our blessings from Santa Jedi. Um, so thank you very much. Um to the Snowwalker family. So. All right. Lots of fun talk in the, uh, <laughs> during the break with, uh, with man, it's going to be a, uh, I, I think you're onto something, Neil. And I think, yeah, I, I, I want, I want that. <laughs> I want that. Bot. All right. I don't care who, who I have to skin alive to get that. bot. I want it. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, Man's gonna get it for me, I think. <laughs> let's uh, let's get into it. Thank you for the shiny nickel, Hellenix. Our, I know that was JJ Manners. JJ Manners with the JJ, shiny the, nickel. JJ gave us the nickel. All right, we've got a few uh, a few fun um, a few fun things before we get into Patreon's choice. Mark your calendars: November fourteenth, Creator Cup two, the Escape Pod Castaways and the Nerdy Network. Versus the Bounty Honeys. <laughs> Creator Cup 2 is coming your way next, uh, not next month, but uh, November 14th. All, all proceeds, all donations via Tiltify will go to Toys for Tots, Neil. We're going we're gonna to try to create some uh, Christmas spirit and spread some Christmas cheer. So, with that being said, mark your calendars November 14th. We'd love to see you. You ready for Patreon's choice? Yep, yep. Hit me up with some questions. All right, I, I'm reading these for the first time. And if you are a, uh, if you're not a Patreon, you can use your channel points to add a question to Patreon's choice. 
All right, I've been wondering what if we are seeing CG's end game for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, that the GLs will be the end of the road. CG will likely put out four more and do all the buffs and nerfs that they can um, as, as they come out, and then they say that's it. With EA losing the exclusivity next year, correct, they're not losing the license. Uh, you know there are other studios that are just chomping at the bit for their chance, and CG might know they can't compete. I They had a five-year plan two years ago, so there's still a there's still three years on that, and I think even Crum has said that there's a new five-year plan. Am I right, Neil? Uh, I, I I don't recall that I'm not off the top of my head. No, I don't recall. I just I genuinely don't know if he said that there's a new five-year plan. Gotcha. We will. So if I don't know if there is, I don't know when he said it. Well, we'll have to we'll have to re-ask that the next time that we talk to him when the puzzle comes out, which I'm still waiting for. Where's Hondo? <laughs> All right. Uh, if you have to put on a charity concert, how long is it? What is the lineup? What's the charity and what's your goal? For me, the goal would be to just raise as much as we can, kind of like we're doing Creator Cup 2. Uh, for, if I was setting up a, a charity concert, what is the charity? I'm going to probably say the Lymphoma Society. Uh me personally would want to benefit the lymphoma society lineup. I would go for nostalgia. Um, offspring would definitely be there. Uh, their show was amazing two weeks ago. Um, I would like to see green day fallout boy, uh, kind of the hello mega tour plus all, I would add offspring to that. Um, Roger Klein and the Peacemakers, or I'd like to see them get back together as the refreshments. I would I would bring Alex Melton, who we interviewed right before my uh, um, right before my birthday this past year. I would love to see that as well. Um, and uh, how long is it? I w I would say it would be just a day long a day long event. Um, get get some new up and comers, but also go back and get those ones that everybody loved to see. What about your uh your dream concert, uh, char dream charity concert, Neil? So I would probably go. I mean, I'd I'd make it. I'd probably go for a. I'd probably go for a um a, a two or a three day festival, um, so that you can get as many artists in as possible. Um, and I, I, I would just make it so that the um, I would make it so that the um, the charity um, was chosen by the band because then it, you know that's the you know that's the incentive to get the bands in. It's like you know we a certain percentage of the proceeds of said concert will go to your charity, the charity that you are a patron for. That's going to get more um, that you know you, you're more likely to get. Um, bands and artists to perform if the charity that is going to be recognized is one that they are already patrons of. So, because, you know, the, m most bands will have like their, you know, a favorite charity of their own. And if you say, right, you know, depending on the ticket receipts, you know, a certain percentage of the ticket receipts are going to go to your favorite charity, the charity that you're a patron of, you're more likely to get the, um, the, the, uh, the concert. No, all right. All right. So uh, we now have. And you're more likely to get the various. Uh, two bands I would have would be um, the Bad Shepherds, Adrian Edmondson and the Bad Shepherds, and um, White Pigeon. Uh, everybody else would be fine. <laughs> there you go. You did break up a little bit there, but uh, we did get the ones the ones I know you love the most. All right. Uh, Dickie Darkside gives us A or B questions. You ready? Hondo Onaka versus Jack Sparrow in a drinking contest. Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Crosshair versus Hawkeye in a fight. I'll go with Hawkeye. I don't, good soldiers follow orders, Neil. Crosshair. No, no. It would be Hawkeye. All right. Definitely, because Hawkeye's better hand to hand. Din Jaren versus The Witcher. Um... I'll go with um, I'll go with Din Din Jaren because the witch don't have 
best yeah, the, the, the witch doesn't have best car armor all over it. Hit, hit, you hit me with a sword. Oh no. Um, here, have a blast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Jabba the Hutt versus a sloth in a 100 meter dash. Uh, Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, Jabba the Hutt actually moves at a walking pace. A sloth crawls. Yeah, huts, huts still move pretty fast, yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Star Wars Visions? Now, Neil, before I do this, I have only seen the first two episodes. Let's try to try to answer this spoiler free. For No, oh, yeah, well, I was going to yeah. do it spoiler free anyway. Yeah, so for me, the first one felt weird, but as an as a anime itself, okay. But having Star having the Star Wars stuff in my head going, how can that happen? It, it kind of took me out of it. The second one was was animated enough that I was like, okay, I I could get into this. That was that was a really really cool uh, a really cool episode. So what about you? Um, episode one was re I really really enjoyed it. Episode one, I thought episode one was great. It was uh, you know it was Last Man Standing uh, meets the Magnificent Seven meets the Three Amigos. <laughs> so but in anime. Um, uh, episode two and three were meh. I'm not going to say anything other than meh. Um, episode four, great. Episode five was awesome, and that's as far as I've got. I haven't watched the six on. Okay, time. but yeah, one good, two, three, you can skip. Four and five, don't skip. If if if, if you had your choice, that you can you can cut out two. It's a bit like it's a bit like the final season of the Clone Wars, right? You can watch. One, two, three, and four. Skip five, six, seven, and eight, and then come back in and do nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and be you know still very, very satisfied with the season. But you won't know the big, the big, uh, the why the people are in Bad Batch if you don't watch those middle ones. Not it doesn't matter. <laughs> five, six, seven, five, six, seven, and eight. So one, two, three, four. All right. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Four. Beskar versus Vibranium. Vibranium. Uh, yeah, Vibranium. Yeah, Beskar can be melted down. Vibranium itself, you know, very, very, even more tough than that. All right. So, of the following albums, uh, this is J.J. Manners' turn. Of the following albums, which were all released in 1991 within 44 days of each other, which one was the first one you heard? Metallica's Black Album, Pearl Jam 10, Guns N' Roses, um, uh, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, The Red Hot Chili Peppers, Blood Sugar Sex Magic, Soundgarden, Bad, uh, Bad Motor Finger, or Nirvana's Nevermind. All of those, 30 years ago, within 44 days of each other. Which one was the Nirvana. first one you heard? Nirvana. Nirvana? I think Pearl Jam 10, Jeremy, was the first one I heard. What is a famous board game that you have never played but really want to try? Um, oh, God. I don't think a famous one I haven't tried. There's, there isn't. The, well, I'm just thinking, I, I, in, we're, we're a board game, you know, the UK is a very, very board game country. Yeah. So, um, you, we, we, you know, you, here's the thing: you, you got to remember, I grew up. As is a there a version when when we had when we had four channels of television, and that was it? Nothing and that's the way else. we liked it because we walked to school both ways uphill in the snow, right? Okay. Yeah, and that is why board game. You know, I mean, uh, in school at lunch break, you would play board games. So. I, I mean, I genuinely, I mean, somebody, no, played Mousetrap. I mean, Risk played it. But Is there a it, version of a popular board game that you haven't played that you want to? Um, no, I've played the Star Wars version of pretty much every board game. I've played Star Wars version of Drafts, the Star Wars version of Chess, the Star Wars version of Monopoly, the Star Wars version of Risk, the Star Wars version of Othello. Okay. Um, I played the Star Wars version of pretty much every board game out there because you know it's it's pretty good. 
there was a Star Wars version of um, um, Scrabble, but it wasn't really a Star Wars. It was just a Scrabble board with a Star Wars motif. So your 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 double triple letters and your double and triple word scores were um, pictures of. Uh, of, uh, Star Wars okay, uh, Bones uh, says the old computer Star Wars chess game was amazing. Bones, I'm not lying when I say this. Just yesterday, in a in a secondhand shop, I saw the Sega CD version of Star Wars chess available, <laughs> but it was out of my price range. <laughs> Just uh, download uh, Retro uh, Retro Watch and. Uh... Bones asked if I played the Fallout board game. Yes, I have. And it is one of my favorites. So I'm going to take this in a two-prong uh, two prong way. What is the what is a famous board game that I've never played but really want to try? That's going to be Pandemic Legacy. What's one that I wish I owned because I've only played it once? Star Wars Duels by Hasbro. So, oh no, no! I've come, I've come up with. I, I would very much like to play the Cones of Dunshire, which is the fictional board game that um, Ben Wyatt created in the TV show Parks and Recreation. <laughs> okay, there we go. I, w- I would very, I would very, I would very much like to play that board game. <laughs> All right, and number three. Uh, this is the last question, I believe. If you were to do a Star Wars trilogy, if you were hired to do a trilogy, would you use a direct canon story, or would you create your own heroes based loosely on on Star Wars lore? And I'm going to add to this to you, for you, Neil. Star Wars lore can be legends in this sense. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I would, I would take, uh, I would take one of the uh, one of the many trilogies from. Um, uh, I would take one of the many trilogies from the extended universe. Uh, I, I mean, here's the thing: you, uh, uh, you could quite comfortably do. Um, uh, let's see, you you could actually you could you could do some. Uh, I, everybody talks about the Thrawn trilogy, maybe the Han Solo trilogy or the Lando trilogy. One that I think would actually be really, really good. Um, that would work very well cinematically is um, the Jedi Academy trilogy, which is the um, uh, which is the trilogy where you basically see Luke Skywalker create the fir- you know his first Jedi Academy. You know he travels all over the galaxy uh, looking for you know a potential Jedi, and he takes them all back to uh, Yavinport. Um, which is where the um, in the extended universe where the first Jedi Academy gets um, uh, set up because it's got there's just you know there's loads of various different aliens and species and different types of people. Um, you've got um, Admiral Dala, who's the uh, the prota- uh, is the antagonist in that, and she is like proper proper badass as uh, um, as an admiral. Um, she's a really really good heel. She's a really really good antagonist um uh for that uh, for that trilogy and uh yeah i i would i would go for something like that because just saying let's do the Thrawn trilogy is a bit too obvious and the han solo is better in book i don't think it would transfer to film and same with the lando calrissian trilogy and there are several other trilogies out there um but the, the i think the one that without the obvious Thrawn trilogy the the the, the best this one that would fit onto film is definitely the Jedi Academy trilogy. All right. For my answer, I would do loosely based around Mitra Siric. I would I would have more of a Mandalorian um ba- base it on on Mandalore with the Jedi invasion that Mitra Siric um started uh or 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 the Jedi invasion of Mandalore and Mitra Surik's op- opposition to it. So that's my answer. <laughs> that's yours. All right. Neil, what you got coming up? Well, um I've got my third round of GAC coming up. My opponent has already attacked and they are 
waiting for me to attack because they've left the fleet. So I guess they kind of want to know what they need to do there. So clever, very tactically astute. Um, and then uh, next week will be um, week three of um, two. Uh, GAC and week oh, two of Week GAC. two of GA Center, so, yes. Uh, yeah. Week two of GA Center and week um, three of GAC. And, uh, you know, I'll have another set of results that I can add to this because I'm, I'm really, really curious as to how many uh, auto deploys and DNSs we're going to get in week two. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. I, I hope the number goes, I hope it goes down. Uh, I don't want it going up and I don't want it staying the same. I want it to go down. So, uh, yeah, that, that'd be me. Yeah. So, all right. So here is, um, you know, once again, save the date, November 14th. On the on the channel, Neil will be taking care of, uh, taking care of his GAC over on Vault Thirty Seven Studios, which is the channel I share with uh, Mrs. Anthony. We will be doing Lego, possibly finishing Lego Clone Wars this uh, the, on Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, and uh, beginning the next one, which I believe is Pirates of the Caribbean Lego Pirates. Um, but we also may have a little bit of. A new game that I found, it's it's an older game, but I saw it for the first time. Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Where Christy mm -hmm. has to tell me what to do with a bomb so I don't blow up. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that does it for us this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for supporting this show. Be nice to each other, damn it. Neil, you got something to tell me? Uh, yes, mate. Um, for sure. Don't mind if I do. See you next time. What's going on? Where the hell are we? Paris? Thank you for pressing the self-destruct button. Attention! This is Colonel Sanders in forward command. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! All personnel proceed to escape pods! Close down the circuits! Evacuate the city! Works. This ship will self-destruct in exactly 10 seconds. <laughs> Counting down. 10, 9, 8, 6. 6? What happened to 7? Just kidding. 3, 2, 1. Have a nice day. Thank you. Hello friends, this is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy. The Escape Podcast was filmed in front of a live studio audience full of tweaked out murder bears. Sit, boo-boo, sit. Good dog.